look at the differentiation of inverse trigonometric functions. Take that please. Given that y is equal to sine inverse of x. Given that y is equal to sine inverse of x. Then, the y over the x. Then, the y over the x is equal to 1 all over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Given that y is equal to sine inverse of x, then the y over the x is equal to 1 all over square root of 1 minus x squared. Proof. Proof. Proof, please. All right. Um, let me try to carry anybody along, please. All right. Help me this one, please. Help me punch this. Punch for this. Punch this. Punch, uh, punch sign 50 in bracket squared plus cos 50 in bracket squared. Please give me your answer, please. Open the bracket, type sign 50, close it, squared, plus cos 50, close it, squared. What's the answer mean? What do you guys One. Right. If it's confirmed, you get one. Alright, so look up. Look up. Here's the idea, look up. Here's the idea, please. If you have sign 50 squared, please. In Greek ratio or in uh, the, the idea of trigonometry, we can write sine 50 squared as sine squared 50. They are the same thing, please. So it means that sine squared 50 plus this f2 plus squared 50 is equal to 1. Um, here's the idea. If the angles are the same, look at it. If the angles are the same, then I can actually say they have sine squared x or theta plus cos squared of a particular angle is equal to 1. Please, it must not be 50. If you use 100, you still have 1. If you use 70, you still have 1. So sine squared something plus cos squared that same thing will give me 1. That's it, I'm idea here. In this case, now, of course, this is a popular tree um, relationship. You can remember this. It's a popular one. Let's replace... Um, let's replace theta with let's say either x or y. From this same concept, we can say that sine squared y per se plus cos squared y is equal to 1. Still write the same thing there. Same like that. In this case here, let's make, uh, let's make cos theta subject of the formula. Of course, my first task would be move this man over here. So I'll have that cos squared y is equal to 1 this man comes here becomes minus sine square y. If I want to get cos y here, I want to take square root. So take square root of this one here, the square root will cancel out the square. Hence, I will left it cos y is equal to take square root here becomes the square root of 1 minus sine square y. Please do not this relation with it. Note that cos y, please here is the square root. Alright, the square root will cancel square here, and you have this. In the same way there, look at this. In the same way there, we can also say that sine y is equal to the square root of 1 minus so square y. See what's the same with this, right? From here, make sine y sum of the formula, cos y comes and becomes minus, which is this, then x square root. So note these two relationships. We'll use them in our derivation. So let's get the proof to this one here. Look at this. So we said that if y is equal to sine inverse of x, that the y over the x is 1 all over the square root of 1 minus x squared. How is that done? Look at this. Uh, first is first. First is first. If I say 2 to the power minus 1, this is equal to 1 over 2. Have it? Right. So I have this. Um, you use the same concept here. From here, this now becomes y equal to. This one becomes what you have. 1 all over this. It becomes 
in quote, before becomes 1 all over sine by what there? x. Alright? Sine inverse becomes 1 over sine times x. If I multiply this one there, this can be seen as y being equal to 1 times x is x all over sine. Next up, cross multiply. This one comes here, this one comes here, of course, all over 1. So y times sine. This one comes here becomes what there? Sine y. That's sine there. Sine y is equal to x times 1. And so I have that sine y is equal to that split. From sine inverse, 1 over sine, this man comes here, I have this, move sine here, that's the multiply. Sine y equals to x times 1 is x. At this point, it becomes an implicit differentiation concept. We said for implicit, I'm differentiating both y and x simultaneously. And the concept is that if I differentiate y, you add what there? The y over the x. Question, if I differentiate x, sorry, if I differentiate sine x, what do you get? Huh? If you differentiate sine x, what do you get? Cos x. So if I differentiate sine y, that gives you what there? Cos y. Since I'm differentiating y, what do you add there? Y over the x. Yes. Um, if you're doing the last class, no, we get. If you differentiate sine y, you get cos y. Add the y dx. Why? Because you're differentiating y. Yes, x. If you shift x, this word there, I have 1. So I have that plus y, uh, the y by the x is equal to 1. Of course, to get the y by the x, I will divide both sides by plus y. If I divide by plus y, I will have that plus y dy over the x is equal to 1. Divide there by cos y. Divide there by cos y. This cancels this. I will have that dy over the x is equal to 1 all over cos y. So I have this. Look at this here. Look at this here. Okay. But I already showed you here that cos y is equal to square root of 1 minus sine squared y. You can see here. So it means that dy over the x is equal to 1 all over. I'll replace this by this. So it becomes square root of 1 minus sine squared y. If I replace it again, this now becomes 1 all over square root of 1 minus, we said sine squared y means sine y or square. If I look at this, we said, where's sine y? Look at this. What's sine y here? X. x. So replace here by x. That means sine y is equal to x over here. So if I now say sine squared y, that's sine y or square because of that, x squared. So that's the proof. That's the proof. That's how it's done. Alright, the second one, number two. Um, given that y is equal to cos inverse of x, then we have that the y by the x is equal to minus 1 all over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So check it out, please. Um, sine inverse of x and cos inverse of x are very similar. The difference is what? Eh? A minus, that's all. Just a minus, that's all. Um, let's get a proof, please. Proof. Proof. Uh, so here's your proof. So let's say we say y is equal to cos inverse of x. Let's get the y dx here. So you're taking the same pattern as the first one. My first case will be y equal to cos inverse is equal to 1 all over cos times x. So we said this man moved the numerator. So I have that y is equal to this one is I have x all over cos of cos all over 1. This one comes here. So cos and y gives you cos y is equal to 1 times x is x. If I differentiate cos x, I should have minus 
sine x. Differentiate cos y is what that? Minus sine y. And what that? In y, in y, yes. Because it's implicit. It's equal to, if I shift x, then this is what that? What happens? Of course. My next step would be divide both sides by minus y. Minus sine y. So I have minus sine y into dy over dx is equal to 1 divided by minus sine y divided by minus sine y. So this one will cancel this. I have that dy over dx is equal to, so look up this, look up. So you the idea, I said before, I said it's improper to leave the denominator as a negative. So in cases like this, where the denominator is negative, take the minus upwards. So it becomes minus one or what there? Sine one, so it happens. Check this out here, yeah? check this out. But from here, we said um, sine y is equal to, from here I'm having the square root of one minus cos square y. So replace this with this. I will have that dy over dx is equal to minus one all over become this the square root of one minus cos square y. Finally, I have that dy over dx is equal to minus one all over the square root of one minus. If we check this out, we said cos y is equal to x. So when you have cos y all squared, because what that? x squared. So that's why we call this. That's a proof. This is how you get the smart So number three, if y is equal to tan inverse of x, then we have that dy over dx is equal to 1 all over 1 plus x squared. 1 all over 1 plus x squared. Um, before your proof, before your proof, so guess what you should know? Note that sine square x plus cos square x is equal to 1. You've shown this one already. Now when it comes to tan there, eh, your relationship is this, that 1 plus tan square x is equal to sec square x. Please note this one. That's the question. That 1 plus tan square x is equal to sec square x. That's how it's done. Let's prove this one, please. So, proof. Proof. If y is equal to tan inverse of x. So, how do you prove this one? Alright, the same pattern. Same pattern. From here, I'll have that y is equal to inverse 1 all over. So it becomes 1 all over tan, of course, into x. So, this becomes this. Of course, this one goes to the numerator here. Yeah? I have that y is equal to x all over tan. Of course, all over 1. So, tan comes to y. I'll have that tan y, this and this, is equal to this and this. That gives you x. Do your normal differentiation. If I differentiate tan x, I should have sex square x. To differentiate tan y, this is what there? Sex squared um, y and what there? Eh? In y over the x. Differentiate x, this is what there? Eh? 1. So I have this. Alright, so we have this. Um, next up, I'll have to divide this side by this one here. Yeah? So I'll have sex squared y into dy over the, the x is equal to 1. Divide this by um, sex squared y. Divide this by sex squared y. So this cancels this. I'm left with y dx. So I have that dy all over dx is equal to, this gives you um, 1 over sex squared y. Look at me. When this was sex squared x, or better still, better still, better still, but we know that sex 
squared y is equal to what there? When it was x, it was 1 plus tan squared x. So if this becomes y, it becomes what there? 1 plus tan squared y. So sec squared y becomes 1 plus tan squared y. So I have this. So hence, it means that dy over dx is equal to 1 all over, this one gives you 1 plus tan squared y. Hence, I have that dy over dx is equal to 1 all over 1 plus um, tan squared y means tan squared y all squared. And we said tan y here is equal to x. So because what here? x squared. So that's your proof. Alright. So that's like your proof for these things. So please note three of them. The sine inverse 1 all over square root of 1 minus x squared. Cos inverse minus 1 all over square root of 1 minus x squared. Then tan inverse 1 all over 1 plus x squared.